In this video, I'm going to talk you through the 1000 watt 14 dirty water pump. I'll talk through the features and benefits and we'll also see it in action as I use it to empty the hot tub in preparation for cleaning and refilling. Now before we see it in action, let's have a closer look and we'll go through the specifications. Right, so the model number of this 14 pump is Q1000B1M. It's got an output power of a thousand watt. When it's on full load, it's on 3.8 amp, and obviously it's at IPX8 because it's being submerged. The actual height that it will pump water is a maximum of 11 meters, which is very, very high. And the maximum liter per hour that it'll pump is 17,600. This is the adapter that it comes with. Now, this is what screws in. This is what's on every dirty water pump. So you literally screw it in like so until it's nice and tight that should be fine like that and you get this adapter um so you can put you can just push holes onto it and obviously use a jubilee clip or a pipe clip and there's two sizes there i think that's um half an inch and an inch or something like that if i'm not mistaken but this isn't what i'm going to be using and this is the floating switch so basically when it's upright when it's floating it switches it on and as it drops down I don't know if you heard it then, but there's a, a switch inside it, a gravity switch, and it switches it off when it's submerged or when it's floating. We've got 25 feet of cable, which will obviously come in useful if it's submerged in something very deep. But let's get the holes attached now. The main reason for using the pump and a hose today is, although I could let it just gravity empty, if I do that, the water is going to come over this edge and it's going to go into my pond. And with all the chemicals that's in the hot tub, that's something that I definitely don't want to do. So hence the use of the hose, but you're going to see how to attach it and the force of water that goes through it. So I bought two lengths of hose. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's around about 25 feet on these. Now I got an adapter because this won't screw directly to this. Now this adapter came with the hose. So all you do is get it, screw that onto there. That's nice and easy. And at the bottom of this, there's a, a rubber o-ring washer, which seals it. So that's on there. And then we get the pipe. And as I said, the adapter came with it. So it should just screw, should just screw on. Okay, so we're all set up on there. And as I said, I've got two lengths of hose. So what we need to do is attach the second length which again is nice and easy both the hoses have the same adapter that comes down screws onto there right now we've got about 25 foot of hose so when we drop in the 14 pump i can take the water away from the pond which is exactly what i want to do right let's get the pipe laid out and the cable unraveled and then we'll drop it into the hot tub. We'll get started. All right, so that's the pipe laid out. Uh, but before we actually drop it into the hot tub, so we've been through the floating switch, but one of the other great things about uh, a dirty water pump is everything's taken in through the bottom and it will actually take debris up to a size of 35 mil through the impeller pump and pop it out of the hose. Everything goes in through the base there's a, there's a hole in the bottom. There's actually a number of holes, but there's a, a main hole in the bottom. Like I say, 35 mil, and it'll put that out through the hose. But one of the main things that I like about a dirty water pump is when you stand it in the water, it actually takes all the water in from the bottom, obviously. So you'll only be left with just over an inch of water in the bottom when you turn it off. And even though the floating switch will be turned off at that point, you can turn it back on again by lifting it up until the last bit of water's out. But obviously you don't want to run it dry neither. Hence why this is a safety option and you're not just relying on the fact that you've got a switch where the plug is. 25 feet of cable. So plenty there. Let's get that plugged in. Now I haven't switched it on at the socket, um, but one thing to remember is you need to use a, an RCD or something like that just in case, because you've got electricity going into water it can be very, very dangerous. So make sure that you're using uh, an RCD trip. Right, that's the top off the hot tub. Let's get it put in. 
Something else that you need to remember as well, in the instructions it says tie a piece of rope around the handle and lower it in by the rope rather than the electric cable. However, I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to drop it in. Okay, so we'll get the pump. Oh, pull the cable over. Now again, remember it's not switched on. So we're just going to lower it into the centre. Right, that's it, in the centre. It should be flat, so don't let the pipe be pulling it in, a, in any particular direction. When I turn the electricity on, because the switch is floating, it's automatically going to be turned on. So this is basically the switch. Even though I'm turning on the electrics, this is the switch. Okay, let's turn it on. Right, the pump started working and it's coming out. Right, so everything's doing exactly as it should be doing. I'm just going to have it coming down there. You can see, you can see there's a fair flow of water there. Now, what I've used dirty pumps for in the past, the pump that you saw earlier, during the summer, it needs aerated. And I've basically put a dirty water pump into the pond and I had this going back into the pond just to aerate it. So we'll leave that there like that. Right, so we'll just let it empty now. So we'll go back and see. Right now that's emptying nicely. You can see on the back there the level, that's dropping as we watch. So all we need to do now is just leave it. This will switch off by itself, but what I'm going to end up doing is I'll pick it up so that there's only an inch left in the bottom, then turn it off, and then we'll just let that inch go out by gravity, which isn't going to damage the pond then. It's been running for roughly a minute. Um, so I've set the stopwatch going now. We'll see how much longer it takes. As you can see, we've got a nice flow of water coming out of the pipe and it's all going down the hill away from the pond, which is perfect and exactly how I wanted. One of the benefits about buying additional pipe as opposed to using hose pipe is all the connections are screwed on so it's not going to pop off and it's not going to leak. So if you're running anything through a house or from inside a house, this is a way of making sure that the water goes exactly where you want it to with no leaks. Something else to remember as well, I don't know if you can pick up on it, but with it running, there's hardly any noise whatsoever. Even the mic's not picking much up. In fact, probably the only noise might be from the, um, from the vibration coming through the hot tub itself. Something else to take into consideration is the speed that it's emptying. If I was doing this through gravity, it'd probably be a couple of hours, if not more, before it was emptied. We're just about three minutes in, and look how far we've dropped already. Also, with the floating switch, I don't need to worry about it running dry, because it's going to switch off before it does that. We'll just put the mic down here so that you can hear. There's next to nothing coming from that. Right, so that's dropped nicely. It's just switched off now. So in other words, the whatever it is in here has slipped down to the bottom and it's switched it off. So I'm going to lift it up. It'll turn back on again. In the past, what I've done is I've strapped it to that so that I can go away and leave it. But in this instance, I'm just going to hold on to it. We'll let it get down below the seats. I'll sweep the water in um, off the seats. And then we'll get the rest of it emptied. And you can see how quickly it's going down now. Now that we're just left with the area in the middle. Right, so we're coming down to the bottom there where the inlet's going to be uncovered. And that's the point where I'll turn it off. Right, that's it. 
so I'll just drop the switch and it turns off now I'm going to push all the water into there uh, do exactly the same again I'll be left with about an inch in the bottom and we'll just use the gravity drain on that right so as I say just get the water into the bottom and when we've emptied it I'll pressure wash it get it all cleaned and ready well, this is just about getting as much water out as possible okay so again just turn it on by lifting the switch up and off right we'll take this out uh we'll let the gravity drain just take out that last bit of water uh, and then we're ready and that was so easy to do right we'll use the gravity drain now and you'll see why it would have taken hours to empty so that's the flow of water from the gravity drain a little bit different it's been going for a minute now and it hardly looks like it's moved in the bottom there right so the gravity feed stopped working on it now and you can see it's actually stopped at not much lower than what the pump took it down to that's it all done and dusted the hot tub emptied in next to no time uh, and in summary what do i think of this 14 30 water pump well you've seen it in action uh it took it down the water level to probably just over an inch which is almost as low as the gravity fed went it did it in a matter of minutes probably 10 minutes to empty the hot tub follow the safety instructions make sure you use an rcd plug I definitely recommend whichever footing one you're going to get make sure you get one with this um, with the gravity switch just for that safety aspect you're not going to run it dry you're not going to damage it it does come with the accessories so that you can a hose pipe onto it if you're going to do that definitely use a jubilee clip or a pipe clip so it doesn't shoot off but i'd recommend buying the additional pipe um, with the adapter to fit onto that let's say if you're running it through a house or anything you don't want it leaking in the house if you've got a large expanse of water uh, and it is going to switch off and you don't want to stand there holding it like i did You've actually got a, a groove in the side there where you can fold it back, put it in, and it'll leave it switched on. But as I said, just make sure it doesn't run dry. You'll damage it. it does exactly what it says on the tin. Huge recommendation. And because we've used the floating dirty water pump, what that means is uh, you can't really see it at the moment, but there's a moor hen just uh, hiding underneath over there. And also down here, you've got frogs and frog spawn there. So that means that because we've used the pump, none of the water has gone into the pond which is the uh, the aim behind it but as i said i've also used it to aerate the pond as well so uh, a jack of all trades